<laughs> Today's video is sponsored. In the Saw series, Jigsaw, or John Kramer, as he's known to his friends who he doesn't murder, is a massive bell end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's more. Who acts as a self appointed arbiter of human morality by putting people in a situation where they're forced to horribly mutilate themselves to prove that they enjoy being alive. Yep. <laughs> and how many films are there now? Is like eight? Eight? eight nine. Is it nine? There's a Chris Rock one. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a, there's a sequel that they don't say is a sequel because they're embarrassed about many of them. Anyway, despite being directly and indirectly responsible for countless deaths, the films have repeatedly tried to show Jigsaw as a sympathetic figure. So poorly, in fact, that the actor who plays Jigsaw was happy that they removed a scene showing that Jigsaw regrets his actions. And Nisha, you can probably tell from my tone that I am not the biggest fan of Jigsaw the character. I love the Saw movies because they are just bad. Yeah. Like, they farted that shit out so fast. So I like the films, but I also find them really hard to watch because I'm squeamish. Yes, and one of the things that you might like to know, Nisha, is that um, the directors... Oh shit, yeah, sorry, um, today's video is sponsored uh, by Grey Cells, the novel. Like, that's the... I forgot, I'm really sorry, guys. Graphic novel Grey Cells, you can read about it in the description below. Watch some of our previous videos or hear about it at the end. Anyway, I really like the Saw series, by which I mean I like the first one and the idea presented in it, and then I just slowly grew to resent it as the people who made them crawled ever further up their own ass. Because there's an interview with one of the longtime directors of the Saw series, Darren Lynn Boosman, um, where he just waxes poetic about the Saw series and what they mean. And they ask him, so, are the Saw movies torture porn? He's like, no, I don't like that label. I don't think that's a fair way to categorize our movies. It's like, every single one of those movies after the first one was sold on the fact that you get to witness people being horribly killed in different ways. Yeah, it's literally scene after scene after scene of people being in horrible situations where they're, they're cutting limbs off or yeah. being <laughs> pulled apart. And that's why I like the first one, because the first one is like, it's more a psychological thriller and it poses a genuinely difficult question to answer. Would you do this if you were in this person's situation? Like, would you cut your leg off to save your life? And watching the characters in that film make that decision is fascinating. Yeah. And one of the things I'm sure people who watch the film and yourself, Nisha, because I know I certainly did, found yourself doing after watching a Saw film is asking yourself and your friends that were there with you, like, would you have done that? Yeah. And my says, I don't think I could. Do you think you could? No. I couldn't. I no. think I just, I just let myself die. <laughs> Yeah, and Nisha, like, what's the trap then that you would, you think you could escape from? Is there one of the traps you think you could? Uh... Because some of them are just fucking unfair. There's a couple where you look at it and go, that's not that bad. But some of them, they're just unfair. I'm just trying to think of all, <laughs> think of, all of the traps in my head. I know there's one where that woman's hair's stuck and basically a scalp's being pulled off. Yeah. That one the thing is, though, really grates against me. She's not got to escape from that. It's someone else got to help. And they're the worst ones. It's like, you die if the other person pusses out. Because there's that one where they have to put their hands in acid to get keys as well. Yeah, I think I could do that one. Yeah. That one looks doable just because it's like, it's really gonna hurt, but I'm not going to lose the hand. I think one of the worst ones is that one where them two people are having to um, they've got scales, they've got to cut off their Yeah, limbs. and she cuts off her arm, yeah, and he's like cutting off pieces of his fat. But, like, you know, to bring it back to the Saw franchise as a whole, for people who maybe aren't familiar um, with the series or its, like, you know, its basic story, uh, I can't help you because chronologically it's an absolute clusterfuck. And I don't think anything sums up more than the fact that Jigsaw, the main character, is dead for more movies than he's alive in. Because he dies in the third movie and he's in every one since. Because they keep flashing back and flashing forward. And also, it's like it seems like at the end of every film, one of the people who have been in that then situation is secretly, is involved, secretly in involved. Like every every time it ends, it's like oh, a twist. Do you know what it is? It's the like horror version of just Harry Potter novels, where at the end Dumbledore explains like, no, it all makes sense if you knew all these things we didn't tell you about at the start. Yeah, pretty much. That fucking ate it. But for anyone who is wondering, like the basic plot is the character of Jigsaw, John Kramer. Uh, it gets, just gets his shit pushed in by life, like he gets cancer, like um, his wife has a miscarriage, and he thinks, you know what, 
fuck this. Right, I'm going to Danny DeVito it from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Suicide is badass and he drives off a cliff. Miraculously survives, then has to unimpale himself from like a steel rod. And then from that, he finds a newfound lease on life and decides to similarly test people who he thinks are not embracing the gift of life. Yeah, so it's like people who take life for granted, yes. who do drugs or abusive and stuff like that. I think, well, do you value your life as much as you probably think you do? Yeah. You know? And they put some in situations where it's like, yeah, I would hurt myself or you know, cut myself apart to survive. Yeah, and what I say to that is, fuck you, who made you judge during execution? Also, that idea has been done way better and in a way shorter time frame in the show Red Dwarf. Are you familiar with this? Um, I've, I've seen a couple of episodes of it, but I'm so not familiar around, with that. I think the seventh, eighth season, they have an episode where they say there's a rogue simulant who lived to the end of time and decided that there is no God, there is, there is nothing left. The only thing that matters in life is to live a life worth living. So he builds a time machine and then travels throughout the cosmos, um, basically just asking people, why do you deserve to live? And if they can't justify to him um, why they deserve the gift of life, he will erase them and replace them with um, another version of themselves who can perhaps live a better life. And I prefer their version of it because one, the person who judges you is not some dickhead old man with a perverted sense of morality. It is yourself. Because the robot puts on your own face and you're judged by yourself. And also, um, seizing the gift of life is like very nebulous. Like, how do you know you've lived a great life? It's like, well, no, you just have to have lived a life worth living. You don't have to be a great philanthropist or, you know, do great things. You just have to have, like, you know, lived each day enjoying it. You have to, like, you know, just appreciate what you've been given. Being granted is the greatest gift of all. The gift of life. Tell me. What have you done to deserve this superlative good fortune? And that's a much better concept than, oh, you're a drug addict, fuck you, <laughs> cut your leg off. So, no, what? <laughs> but, Anisha, while I open um, this secondary beer, which has the word doom on it, um, would you like to just, like, talk about the character of Jigsaw? Like, what's your opinion on them? Mine is, like, just huge dickhead. Yeah, pretty much the same as you. Just, like, massive yeah. swaggering bellend. It's like part of you feel sorry for him because of what he's gone through, but it's like he shouldn't, that shouldn't mean he has to then make everyone else's lives hell. Yeah, and um, something I should point out is that the films have repeatedly tried to showcase Jigsaw as a sympathetic figure. Like they say, oh no, look, oh his wife had a miscarriage, oh no, he got cancer, yeah. oh he tried to commit suicide. It's like loads of people go through a lot of misfortune and they don't murder people. Yeah, exactly. Weirdly enough, that's a sentiment the people behind the Saw franchise don't agree with, um, because there's an interview with the aforementioned um, longtime director of the series, um, Darren Lynn Boosman, with IGN, and when he was talking about the third movie, where he gets really annoyed at the idea that Jigsaw is a villain. Well, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is a, I'd say he's a villain. He kills people. But then, I think in the films they even say he's not technically killing people. I fucking, I hate that. Every time someone says that, I go, fuck you. That's the director speaking. Any person watching that who has a reasonable mind will say, he is responsible for their deaths. Yeah, like, he put them in their situation, so... If I put you in a situation where your death is all but guaranteed unless you horribly mutilate yourself, I am responsible for your death. The letter of the law backs that up, but no, not according to the director of Saw 3. I've never murdered anyone in my life. The decisions are up to them. Yeah, well, putting a gun to someone's head and forcing them to pull the trigger is still a murder. And specifically, he argues that it's unfair to categorise Jigsaw as a villain because all of his victims have a chance to escape. And I'll have to counter that by saying, fuck you. Before anyone says, but aren't there traps that are literally impossible to escape and therefore are just, you know, murder just with more steps? Um, the director had a counter to that gotcha by saying, well, technically, those traps were set by people inspired by Jigsaw, not Jigsaw, which I still think makes him a villain because he is directly inspiring people who then go out to murder somebody. Also, fuck you. <laughs> And the thing is, though, I think many of his traps, you could argue that he is giving people a chance if he gave them, like, an hour. And one of the things that I want to point out is that the director's argument of people always have a chance to escape is undone by the law of the film that guy helped direct. For example, um, in the first film, they have, like, a, a cutaway 
to a guy who died in a trap, the razor hallway. Do you remember that one, Nisha? Yeah. It's like a 10 foot hallway with razor wire. You yeah, and he's just kind this. of stuck in it, isn't he? His, body, yeah. his body's just kind of stuck there, in like in midair or something like that. Yeah, and it ends with Jigsaw saying, that guy clearly did not want to live, even though his first instinct upon being told you have to escape is to body check 40 cubic feet of razor wire dick first while he's naked. I'd argue that guy wanted to live, but the situation he was put in was almost impossible to escape from. And the first film like, doesn't really tell you who that guy is, but if you watch the entire series, as I've done, you'll find out that that guy is actually Jigsaw's ex-wife's ex-husband. Oh shit, is yeah. it? Oh, Which God. sounds awfully like he just didn't like his wife's ex and found an excuse to kill him. It'd be all right if the directors would be waiting for him like, no, Jigsaw never killed anybody. He put the gun in their hand and told them to pull the trigger. He did not hit her. He did not hit her. There it is. So what has this got to do with Jigsaw being regretful? Well, in the aforementioned Saw 3, there is a deleted scene, which to my knowledge has not seen the light of day yet, unless there's a clip of it right now, with Carl is wrong, just emblazoned across it. And in that scene, Jigsaw tearfully breaks down when he realizes that people view him as a murderer and not a man who is teaching people to embrace the gift of life. <sighs> yeah, that's my reaction too. And it's also the reaction of Tobin Bell, the actor who plays Jigsaw, because when he was asked about the existence of that scene in an interview, he asked him, like, is it true that there's a scene in one of the Saw movies where Jigsaw admits that he was wrong? And was like, yeah, there is. They cut it. I'm glad they did. Jigsaw knows what he was doing. I feel like it would undo everything yeah. that it led up to that moment. Like, of all the stuff he's done, it just seems like, well, what's the point in doing it? If he turns around and says, oh yeah, I regret everything, it's like, well, great. It's a massive fucking cop-out, and also he's not a sympathetic character because he murders countless people. He's in the direct inspiration for the murders of countless more. But bringing it back to Bell and his assessment of Jigsaw as a character, that resulted in him arguing against a scene in the third movie um, where Jigsaw was surprised at a trap going wrong uh, because he thought, well, Jigsaw is so cocksure of himself, he's so just smarmily confident in his own abilities. He would never be surprised at something going wrong because it wouldn't go wrong because he plans everything out like, you know, seemingly years in advance. Like, they have scenes in those movies where he anticipates his own fucking death. There's no way he's going to be surprised that a trap went wrong because the trap would not go wrong. But <laughs> while he was arguing that, the actual prop for the trap went wrong. <laughs> And according to Bell, it was really, really lame and made for a really boring day of filming. So he was still right. It would have been a shit thing to include. So nearby Nisha, once again to reiterate, all of this week's content has been sponsored by the makers of the graphic novel Grey Cells. They had no input on the content besides saying, at least make it a bit spooky because the thing we're making is a bit spooky. The money they sent us for the sponsorship is paid for this shit you see in front of you. It's giving Nisha, Brad and Lucas a nice bonus of £250. And there's a link to the first chapter of the graphic novel below. And below that still is a link to the Kickstarter if you want to help make it reality and get a bunch of like, you know, rewards for helping realize it. And just once again, thank you to those guys for believing in the fact theme brand. And Nisha, I've, I've just realized I'm wearing a Tommy Musso costume. You it's are? It's like in a fucking inside pocket. There is one. Yeah, there is. And I'm sat on a desk surrounded by a bunch of plastic shit. Yep. That's true. That's all been paid for by a sponsor. I wonder what I should do. Well, I think I know the answer, and that answer is I should finish this beer right here and absolutely go ape shit as we play my song. Thanks. Oh no! Oh no, the light! Fuck! Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again